country like Nepal, which do not have a lot of experienced people, experts, those who have spent years of their time in researching and you know, I'm getting acquainted with the international market. Tourism is not simply welcoming tourists from the airport. Hello and welcome to Nepal Traveler Travel Trade Talk. Once again, we are back with a very interesting episode and we have a very special guest, Mr. Suman Pandey, who is a prominent tourism entrepreneur in Nepal, a person who has a renown not just in Nepal, but also internationally. And recently he has taken on as the vice chair of Partai International. Congratulations, Suman, sir, and welcome to our show. Thank you, Terence. <laughs> so, sir. On this recent uh, appointment as the Partha International, and that's the first time a Nepali is at that level, would you like to share your thoughts and what that means for Nepal? Uh, Terence, actually, I have a very interesting experience with Partha. I had been the member of Partha International since 1996. Those days, the fee used to, to be $2,000 a year, quite expensive, you know, and I was paying. You know why I was paying the fee to be just to become a Pata uh, member to have that logo on my letterhead because I wanted to show international, but I never went to Pata International's programs. I never knew that they would be so instrumental and significant to what we are doing. So, accidentally, I became the chairman of Pata in 2013. Then I thought, you know, Pata Nepal chapter. Pata Nepal chapter. Yes. In 2013, then I thought now it is the time I should uh, have a first hand experience of Pata International. Then I took part in a uh, Pata annual summit that took place in Bangkok in 2013. There I realized, you know, how important, uh, instrumental and significant that Pata could be to help the Nepalese tourism. Then I decided I would try to establish every sort of cooperation with Pata directly to the headquarter or any experts from Pata, any members uh, from Pata to bring in their expertise and uh, experiences through exchange programs. And I started organizing various programs in Nepal where they had been invited as guests. And my five years term in Pata became very vibrant and successful because of that. And with that, then I was invited to take part in the board because they all knew about my performance here in Nepal. So in 2020, I, I stood for the election for the post of secretary come treasurer. We have one post for two positions in Pata, secretary and treasurer. And I had a competition with a, a Malaysian colleague. And ultimately I won because everyone's you know, choice was me. So that was the first time and in 2024, again, I stood for election. I was requested to continue. I did and this time it was unopposed. And so this third term, I was a bit reluctant about uh, whether I should continue with Pata because I had started some other uh, subjects also here in, tourism, here in Nepal. Then, but I received requests again from the colleagues that I should not be, you know, leaving and, and I should continue with Pata. I stood for uh, vice chairman and it was very um, interesting uh, to receive support from all the members. And there was also a competition and I was lucky enough to have this uh, colleague from American Guam who generously uh, stand, stood with me and he withdrew his nomination. Ultimately, I so became unopposed, you know. So, I mean, working as general secretary for four years and now taking this position of uh, vice chairman for a two-year term, I find it as a new challenge because as a vice chairman, now I have to directly compliment to the chairman. 
So wherever chairman uh, cannot uh, reach, you know, I have to compliment to the gap. So definitely I would be working more hand in hand together with the chairman to take ta uh, pa uh, part towards a new initiative. You know, we have uh, come up with a new strategic plan 2030 where PATA will go through, you know, different uh, plans and we are basically trying to make PATA more useful and beneficial to our members. Being a non-profit association, we cannot look at making profit or revenue only. Whatever we earn, we try to make small revenue to maintain our headquarter. On top of that, whatever is received, you know, we will try to pay back to our members. This is how we would like to take part ahead. So what is the significance in terms of this for Nepal? I mean, now that you have someone from Nepal as the vice chair, I'm sure Nepal as a destination now gets a little more highlighted. And uh, would you like to tell the travel trade here? See, Nepal has been the member of PATA since 1975. And for a country like Nepal, which do not have a lot of experienced people, experts, those who have spent years of their timing in researching and, you know, and getting acquainted with the international market. Tourism is not simply welcoming tourists from the airport. No, there are so many other factors uh, related and relevant to the business. So for that, you know, PATA comes up with many areas of need which can be complementing to the growth of our tourism. So PATA has uh, various uh, categories of members. One is the government. So uh, directly the NTUs are participating as the government member. Uh, another is the industry member. So we people from the travel trade industry, including hotels, are the industry member and another are the uh, consultant members. So that means people, those who are into consultancy and experts, you know, they become the expert members, consultant members. On top of that, we have student chapters, youth forums and like this. One thing that I have uh, realized in Pata is Pata is full of experts. An expert who would be charging thousands of dollars, you know, for his few hours of services in consultancy could be available for free to its member countries. And that's why Nepal is one of the most engaged beneficiaries from Pata activities. Uh, if I need to take a few names, you know, uh, like uh, in 1976, right after we became the member of Pata International, uh, Pata helped Nepal to draft the overall tourism police strategic plan for Pokhara. Today's Pokhara was what uh, was initially suggested by Pata. Mm. And after that, there had been several programs organized uh, here in Nepal, including the Heritage uh, Conference. Since Nepal is the destination for adventure, and Pata conceptualized the, um, I mean, event called Pata Adventure Travel Mart, Mart and Ecotourism Conference. And that was initiated from Nepal sometime in, 19, in the 90s. After that, I think this event has been organized in Nepal six or seven times, including the one in Pokhara last year, together with our annual summit. And since I was on the board of Pata, you know, you know, you remember that the Eti airline accident that happened and the tourism industry in Pokhara came into a traumatic situation. So they were into a very... Uh, uh, poor level of you know motivation and, and psychologically all the entrepreneurs were were uh, worried also and that was a very traumatic stage so i pushed a lot to with pata uh, headquarters and requested all the board members that you know we should organize one pata international event in pokhara because every thought everyone thought pokhara was den uh, dangerous to fly okay and everyone thought that flying at year is dangerous so it's not that, you know, accident always happens with some causes, you know, it doesn't happen all the time and accident happens everywhere. Uh, once, you know, PATA annual summit and the Adventure Tourism Mart was organized in Pokhara that brought in 250 international delegates. Altogether, there were six and seven hundred students, including uh, delegates, including the students. I think that was very, very instrumental in mitigating the 
sense of you know terror towards pohara after that i found that the movement become uh, became very small because uh, there could be no one you know so well related to tourism uh, related to tourism then the members and the family of pata when pata travels to pohara why not others that sort of said this is how we do the crisis management and pata helped nepal to draw the crisis management and recovery action plan in 2015 or after okay yes uh, because uh, those days you know we were approached by several international consultants and they had charged up to 300000 euros to do the uh, action plan okay and pata did it free pata engaged 14 volunteers in nepal and international uh, i mean arena to engage for this you know to to do research and write on different subjects ultimately a tourism recovery plan came up then we uh, submitted this to the ministry on the basis of that several events you know were organized we invited uh, the celebrities national and international according to pata strategic plan you know if you remember do you uh, have it do, did you notice david beckham playing table playing, tennis yes. on a street you know table cemented table in yes. bhaktapur and there were so many hollywood actors and celebrities okay. musicians they all came to help nepal and the and even the prince prince hari i think who, who yes. had been carving you know in in pattern yes. all these a- 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 events organized was you know planned somewhere and they all came from the derivation of the action plans given by pata this way and not only this any time whenever nepal needs help i think pata okay, is the I mean, only international body that is full of experts that is where we can get help from and i'm very confident that nepal will never have any problem in the subjects that we cannot deal independently even in the post covid era right. pata has been very instrumental even in nepal in pointing out strategies and things yes 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 in post covid actually pata worked as a our core core center to supply information to all our mem- all uh, pata members you know in how to deal with covid okay and there were many many uh, uh, i mean uh, the the medical the directives no and to everybody did not understand that so pata was there to you know explain on the directives what they need to do how to go for the recovery plan all sorts of you know knowledge sharing kind of activities were there and not only that pata even lobbied directly with the world travel and tourism council and other national and interna- including who to do uh, things and take actions quicker than what was expected because and this uh, there was a big conflict between the business community and the health community you know health community always said no no and business community always said quick quick okay so to bring balance between this pata played an instrumental role um, by lobbying through different un bodies so coming to nepal yeah. where do you see nepal as a destination at the moment i mean covid is behind us now mm-hmm. we are we should be into proper marketing Uh, where do you see the next season the next year where will nepal as a destination be nepal see you no know, for for years nepal has been a niche destination and especially covering the mountains and the okay. middles offering trekking and adventure kind of activities and that should not only be the limit for nepal to promote its tourism and uh, till this date we have seen many interesting examples of tourism around the world so just look at dubai you know dubai was a country with sands only full of sands and there are other country many other countries which did not have any 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 tourism scope look at nepal tarai region you know nobody thought tarai region could yeah. have uh, tourism scope now after this casino revol- revolution every district of in tarai is, is trying to go for a five star hotel and casino revolution you know tarai used to be a destination where we could find only mithai mithai shops no no formal restaurants also because of this casino re- revolution i think these are all the ways i am brought by um, the 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 a different uh, kind of thinking you know um, uh, like uh, innovation and ideas you know brainstorming so going through innovative ways i think now the time ha- has come where we need to look at redefining our product blending with our 
um, uh, conventional assets. Like we have mountains, we have greenery, whitewater rivers, and together with it, now we should go for mice, we, we should go for events, we, could, we should go for uh, like I mean, training, you know, the student groups, you know, cultural exchange, like this. And, and even using high, our high altitude mountains also, we, we, can, we, we need to blend it with uh, the celebrity moments, events, organizations. And if you remember in 2009, there was uh, this uh, Kala Patar cabinet meeting. Cabinet meeting, yes. And luckily, I got opportunity to serve as the chief technical coordinator for, uh, for that. Basically, that was my brainchild because it, before it was dro a dropped idea um, saying that it's not feasible. But somehow we could do it and I got opportunity to lead that. After that happened successfully, you know what was the media exposure? 17.2 million media worldwide that was counted by google okay so it, this kind of uh, events we can bring every time every month every week you know at average base camp there can be an international event every yeah. week see uh, just imagine you know at this time of digital <coughs> world how much of publicity we could can get and our rules are quite conventional and we in many ways we are not compatible to the change that's coming very fast and we have to think quite quicker in this and make ourselves smart and competitive talking about creative ways i also remember this every skydive which right. you were involved in would you like to share something about that okay that, that every skydive came you know in 2007 like my basic uh, behavior i love talking about ideas i spent I can spend hours talking about new ideas. I, I never get tired. And it's the world of imagination, you know. And down in your office, I saw Women. somewhere Richard Branson's, you know, picture. And he is also one of my motivational factor, actually. I always talk about, you know, when I'm talking with younger people or students, I always talk about his story on imagination. What he says is imagination is human, human one of human beings greatest qualifier without it there would be no innovation advan advancement or technology and the world would be dull right the same way i mean i am not saying i am following him but i find that i have that character i keep imagining and in 2007 we organized the mission everest for bear grills the fam famous uh, this adventurer. Uh, yeah adventurer and he was flying uh, in everest area to defeat the height of Everest through paramotor. He did that. During that mission, you know, I discussed with my British friends on organizing skydiving in Sangwaje, which nobody had thought at that time. So the next season, right in six months, the next spring season, we brought our reconnaissance group. We did some drops by helicopter and it came successful and the coming September there was a plane, Pilatus Porter plane that flew all the way from Switzerland, the Swiss Boogie aircraft to do skydiving in in Sangboche and that was a very successful event with 43 drops I think, 43 people, almost 60 people at the base camp that was a very interesting and that uh, interesting thing and that was also covered by BBC and many other news and after that we are doing it uh, every year uh, as a festival you know that's as an event every year skydiving in the Himalaya is something that you cannot go uh, regularly and you cannot go into mass because you have to be very careful about the weather window you have to uh, catch the right weather window to ensure safety uh, so that's why it cannot go in mass but publicity wise it's one of the best events and we received several titles like, you know, the six, uh, uh, we are in number six on CN, uh, CNN's sure. uh, things you should do before, before uh, you die, you know. do before you die, something like that, you know, try before you try die, you before try before you die, before yes. you die. Uh, CNN ranked sixth uh, on that and there are several other titles also and that's something very interesting and now people were interested to do more we started re receiving requests from more than 100 people every year and Sangboche is not the right place to okay. operate 100 people. So we have chosen Pokhara and right after the completion of Everest Skydive, we go to Pokhara at Pame at that uh, the ultralight companies. 
Avia clubs, Avia you know, clubs. the mini airport. And there we do skydiving. And last November also we had 173 people. Uh, okay. Always there are some Indian celebrities coming, you know, but they don't want to expose. <laughs> so, so it's sir, going well. This kind of creative things, I mean, they put Nepal as a destination on yes. the map. They have people talking about. Do you think that right now the stakeholders, the people who are in charge of the, uh, the destination promoting it, they are doing enough to come out with new and creative ways well, are we stuck in the same See, marketing? Uh, I mean, uh, Terence, what I think is that the concept of marketing has changed. You know, before we used to publish advertisement in the newspapers, we were uh, just uh, visiting B2B fairs, you know, like this. But now the marketing has taken a, a different turn. And now it is more digital. And to do, to uh, be popular in digital marketing, you have to, you need to have a vibrant content, you know. And so they uh, call it content is the king and distribution is the queen. Social media is the distribution channel and queen wears the pants. That means, you know, even distribution channel is more, important. more important than the um, content. So that is one thing. And while having a content also, what do you have a content? Is having a few words of tagline is enough. Having one picture is enough. Having one small uh, short video is enough. So, I mean, you need to create a story with what you are pre presenting. So, they call uh, say it nowadays, you know, selling is storytelling. You should be able to s tell Sounds a story, story through your content. Then only it becomes popular. And when somebody's stories are, you know, getting popular day by day and they receive hundreds of thousands of viewers and they have a very strong platform created, then mm -hmm. they become influencer. Nowadays, you know, you don't need to become uh, do something great, win, win, win Olympic gold medal or act in a uh, award-winning movie or anything. You can just become a celebrity by right. having half million followers no, exactly. on your social yeah. media. So you, you, we, we can see there are so many influencers. They all are, have become social media. And in every country, they are well regarded because they have the power of selling. Exactly. No? Exactly. So that is the thing. And so we need to work together in this, I think. And uh, the, the, all, although we, we, the people in business, are competitors to each other, then we should learn to collaborate within the competitors, you know. And now there is a concept called collaboration uh, between competitors. If co competitors collaborate together and they try to fight, uh, fight against a bigger issue, beyond their boundary, yeah. then we can then become we can the suc become successful in terms of our issues, right? right? So we have to go that way. And somehow I see in the industry now, there is no very few people who can uh, act as an influencer to integrate people with different mindsets and ideas. That is always important. And even from the political side also, I don't see much. I worked very actively on Nepal tourism year 2011 and that time we had Mr. Saras Singh Bhandari as the minister. We always remember him as one of the most uh, uh, vibrant minister and his way of commanding the total industry was very good and we all worked with one go, okay, one motive and one direction. One this is what, what we need to go and there should be a very strong bonding of collaboration among competitors. Right now, how do you see this uh, this bonding, this, let's say cooperation, more than bonding, at least cooperation? Because even tourism board is now not very active. They are still missing their leadership. They have not been able to appoint. And so are we missing that gap? So it's not only the question of tourism board. This is the uh, governance failure <laughs> everywhere, not only in tourism. We have 24 ministries. And if you uh, try to look uh, in minute way, you find problem in every ministry. You know, we don't have a strong political leader who has a vision or knowledge on the industry. Secretary, secretaries are changing, changing quite often. No? And now there is a lot of uh, tension within the Nepal Tourism Board. Or again, it has uh, gone into court proceedings, you know, Nepal Tourism Board. It happened for a long time. And we had to sacrifice a lot to I mean, clear out that situation. Now it again, has uh, uh, again. So uh, it has again gone into the same situation. There, there is a, 
a strong sense of disintegration within the team of Nepal Tourism Board. Industries, representatives, you know, going to Nepal Tourism Board are not being compatible to what the real need is. You know, all these uh, things make our uh, industry quite weak. And my only uh, thinking of for solution is that, you know, we need to have strong leaders both from the government sector, the bureaucratic sector, and also from the private sector. So now that you are with the international uh, partner, yeah. perhaps you could take a lead and what are your ideas? I mean, See, because tourism board is going to be in this legal issue for some time, but yeah. the marketing cannot stop, the, the promotion cannot stop. See, uh, Terence, you know, right now I am the vice chairman of PATA and we have 63 countries involved in uh, PATA. So my first priority now would be to solve PATA on its uh, broader um, initiatives, okay? Uh, definitely being a Nepali citizen, Nepali entrepreneur and as a Nepali industry leader Tourism working leader. in various associations as president and secretary for a long time associated with Nepal Tourism Board and many events and it becomes my duty also to help Nepal. But I don't have any way to make a direct intervention here. If I was the chairman of PATA, you know, I could integrate all track operators and go to the minister and say, you should do this, you should do this. So um, I don't have, I don't but maybe have, now you could get uh, stakeholders uh, from TAN, NATA, everybody, uh, because they will look I, up to I don't, you. I don't have any, you know, ground level, I mean, organization now, but definitely, you know, I am, I'm in consultation with the association leaders. With all of them, yes. So I can at maximum level play an advisory role. And working with, uh, with PATA, you know, and, and again, you know, trying to integrate the association chairman and trying to, you know, uh, work in more political way that may be harmful between because ultimately it the is the government is that may be harmful between, for, on the relation between exactly. government of Nepal and PATA International. So I have to acknowledge to that also. Uh, whatever level of, you know, vibrance I have within me, Sometimes I need to suppress it. <laughs> to keep it bureaucratic. <laughs> I have to be more diplomatic, diplomatic about it. But exactly. any sort of exercise uh, and any sort of opportunities that I could bring through my contact, my network, you know, my own involvement in national and international organizations, I should be, you know, trying to help Nepal. It is always there, not only in my lips, you know, on my in my lips, but in my heart, you know, I have been there all, all the time. Thank you so much, sir, for taking the time and coming to meet us. Thank you. Thank it's you, a great sir. opportunity. Yeah.